Hello, my dear friends. Today, we are going to continue our review of the diary of German Oberlieutenant Martin Stiglitz. Remember to rate this video and also leave your opinion on this story. And we are about to begin. October 9, 1941. It's 9.35 a.m. At 12 p.m., the offensive is to begin. Initially, by the forces of the 1st Battalion alone. Then, we'll see the behavior of the enemy. In the offensive zone of the regiment, since 7 a.m., we've counted at least 32 explosions. Those scumbags must have booby-trapped the whole area. Our attack will be supported by eight batteries. Another encirclement of the Red Army has been achieved near Vyazma. That's why they're withdrawing here. The neighboring division has also begun to advance, as well as another one following it. So far, there is no engagement with the enemy. About the situation in the south, the aim of the tank breakthrough is to capture Rostov on Don. The Russians have opened artillery fire on us, but everything for now is hitting the lake. Are they going to move away from here, or will they simply take up new positions in the rear? I think the second option seems more likely. The Reds will make the roads impassable in any case. Well, we shall see. October 10th. It's noon. We are in Gorodok, on Volgo Lake. The 1st Battalion successfully advanced yesterday. Since yesterday, we've been in the positions they abandoned. What glorious holes they have! It is terribly cold inside them, but when you heat the dugout stove, you can't stay there because of the smoke. We woke up this morning, and the whole place was completely white, and the snow doesn't melt. When we were rounding Volgo Lake yesterday, the Reds on the Curtises unsuccessfully attempted to attack us at low altitude. All of our military vehicles are still in the woods. I hope it will reach us today, or else we will be left without hot food. October 12th. Well, there is always something exceptional on Sundays, and today proved to be no different. We spent the whole of Saturday in the Gordok. Then an order came for our regiment to gather in the Mulvatizi area. This order has been followed by a similar order to the whole 12th Division. The rumor is that we should move north through Demyansk again to replace the SS in their positions. The huge forces of the Reds are surrounded in the center. The Donbass is totally swept clean of the enemy and opened. I think the Red Army will be completely crushed even before the real winter comes. I wonder what happens then. What mission would we face? The roads are terrible these days. They're totally useless for vehicles. We took with us only a field kitchen. Our convoy moved on a different route and will reach us only tomorrow. So it's our fate to stay without food today in a miserable hellhole called Lepuka. A liaison officer from the battalion delivered an order. On October 13th, I should go on a mission to Finland. Oberlieutenant Mattenklot will be my substitute as company commander. October 21st. I am at Kankenpa in Finland, attending a training course in the Finnish army. It turned out as follows. The day I made my last entries, I had already even fallen asleep. The battalion liaison suddenly brought an order to assign me to Finland since October 13th. Oberlieutenant Mattenklot is to substitute for me in my company. The training course will last four weeks. On Monday, I rode on horseback to the regiment, quickly packed all the necessary things, and said goodbye to everyone. The regimental commander also said that this is your encouragement and reward. I had lunch in the regiment, then I went to the corps in Molvatizi, stayed overnight there, and the next morning, with six other fellows from the division who had been assigned with me, went by truck to Staraya Rusa. We had to pass the area occupied by partisans on the way. The road was simply awful. We had to cover 140 kilometers by truck. In the evening, in Staraya Rusa, I took a train to Pskov. I napped on the way. The next day, on October 15th, I arrived in Pskov. I had lunch there and drank my first beer. Then, in the evening, I took the train to Rival. I arrived in Rival, Tallinn, in the evening, at 11.30 p.m., on October 16th. We had a common dinner at the Estonia. I had a great sleep. And before that, I also bathed. The next morning, all the participants of the training course gathered at the Alkanen. In the afternoon, with the first group on the Junkers 52, covered by fighter planes, we flew across the Baltic towards Helsinki. We landed there at 1 p.m. We settled down at the Karelia. Very comfortable. We had a small banquet with our comrades in the evening. It was strange. Everyone felt as if it wasn't with us, as if it was a dream, and no blackout. The following day was devoted to sightseeing in Helsinki. This evening, we were invited to a dinner party organized by the Finnish army. The atmosphere was lovely, and the food was fantastically good. The next morning on Sunday, we watched the movie Finland Calling. Then we enjoyed a sauna, 
then lunch and a four-hour excursion around Helsinki. Then we started exploring the city and remarkable buildings, culminating in a visit to a trophy exhibition. Then we went to the cinema. Next morning, yesterday, we left for Kankanpa through Tampere. We had a dinner party at Olonko. It was very nice. Upon arrival in Kankanpa, we had a common dinner. The Finnish officer candidates performed a concert. They were singing and playing musical instruments. It was excellent. Today, the training started. How are our comrades doing? We've just got a special report that tonight we're expecting an operative report on the Northern Front. This is about our comrades. October 23rd. We had a bit of a drinking party with the Finnish officers last night. What a miracle it is, the champagne, and a true one, French champagne. I'm even a bit out of shape today. At 7 a.m., we get up, then we have training until noon, then lunch, and right after that, we study again until 4 p.m. They serve a dinner at 6 p.m. Today, I was at the cinema. It was the Finnish national movie, the February Manifesto. October 29th. Last Sunday, I went to Pori. It's a port town about 60 kilometers from here. On Sunday afternoon, I had a nap. In the evening, we went to the Linumlala pub. On Wednesday, we visited the sauna, and since then my cold has almost disappeared. We watched two more movies, which were Green Gold and Runner Ivor. Both of those movies are Finnish, and pretty boring in our eyes. That's probably due to the fact that we don't understand Finnish. Our service here is also pretty boring from time to time. The Finns think very highly of themselves. Well, they have the right, but they always mention the year of 39, when we failed to help them, but generally they are childish. They don't want to understand that we had other problems at the time. November 4th. The training course is coming to an end. They showed us a lot of interesting things, which gives us an impulse to apply what we have learned. We spent Sunday afternoon until 9 p.m. in the encampment. I had a nasty cold last week. The cold took over my entire body. I felt so bad Sunday morning that I almost listed myself as sick. By sleeping and having a sauna, sauna sessions as we called it, I managed to get over the darn illness and now only the pretty bad headaches remained. We were visited by Colonel von Bernut of the General Army Command and we asked him about our division. Nothing to show off. The division is firmly stuck and is hardly moving forward. I wonder what condition of our regiments we expect to see them in. What a change of environment it will be for us when we get back to our units. Two days later, we flew out of Helsinki, as there was a threat of icing. We were on our own in the evening in Rival, Tallinn. We drank a lot in parting. The way to Staraya Rusa was pretty bad. It was boring. The cars were unheated. In Staraya Rusa, I and Lieutenant Stupenagel noticed the truck from the 3rd Battalion, which dropped us to the division location in the village of Pesky. There I stayed the night with the 2nd officer of the general headquarters. His name is Hans Paul. He is our old battalion physician. He also told me the first piece of news. The regiment had suffered heavy casualties, including my company. I telephoned the regiment and Hitch told me that my patent date had been delayed by 14 months. My new period of service in the rank of Oberlieutenant will be counted from July 1, 1940, with the number of 61A. The next day, I headed to the regiment, and another day later to my company. During my absence, 54 men dropped out of service. 21 of them dead. Lieutenant Schubert is dead, and Lieutenant Luther, and Lieutenant Met. Six non-commissioned officers also killed, and all of them are our veteran warriors. Vayner and Kunki are wounded. Oskinovich is wounded. My company has only four squads now. Mattenklot suffered a nervous breakdown during one of the attacks. My guys were truly glad to see me back with them. And now I'm sitting here as battalion quartermaster. In two days, the battalion, as well as the whole regiment, will be withdrawn from its positions and given a break. I myself have been busy conducting two-day training courses on the subject of war in winter conditions. I've conducted eight courses so far. After Mattenklot, the company was under the command of Lieutenant Uber, and then Oberlieutenant Ringel. And now, when the company returns here, I will again take command. Due to the fact that I was in the regiment all the time during the course, I managed to avoid a new assignment. They intended to send me as an adjutant and an instructor at the disposal of the head of the company commander's school. By good fortune, I managed to prevent this. No one knows in the regiment or in the division who was behind the re-dating of my officer's patent. Could it be Major Engel? 
Major Oberauer, who was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel on November 1st, is sadly gone too. A serious intestinal fistula put him on the operating table. What a pity. He was a true battalion commander. This is how we enter the Russian winter. The Russians are right under our noses. It'll be a solid front line that keeps large forces in constant fighting. But we have already weathered so much in this war. We can overcome this winter and the Russians in the winter battles. It would be ridiculous not to have faith in that. We never forget our old saying, together we'll make it. Everything will work out because it is impossible not to. That is all for today. You can watch other episodes of this diary by following the link in the pinned comment. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and support the channel by subscribing. See you all later. Until next time.